Well, as is often the way I begin these things, I have a thought for poor St. Andrew. We hear a little bit about him in the gospel, how quickly he followed Jesus when he was invited, uh, what he did thereafter. We know that he had some connections apparently with the more Greek-leaning side of the Hebrew religion. So he spoke Greek, and Greeks came looking for him when they wanted to talk to Jesus in one of the later gospel stories. That's about all we know. It, it's really only in the post-gospel period that St. Andrew really seems to have gotten busy. And of course, all of that is mostly pious legend. And some legends say that he went and preached in Scythia, which would be the area from Crimea and up north of that in, in Ukraine and southern Russia. Uh, that story is expanded to say that he went all the way up the, the river, the Volga, from Romania through Ukraine and into Russia and converted those countries and it's for that reason that St. Andrew is the patron saint of Russia. Another legend says that he was shipwrecked in Cyprus and struck a rock with his staff and water came out of it. And you might know where that story comes from. Uh, and that had, water had miraculous powers. And there's been a monastery there ever since, right down to today. I've been there. Another story says that he was in Malta. Apparently he was martyred in Greece. And then he got really, really busy because then his mortal remains were scattered all over the earth. There were dozens of churches that had pieces of St. Andrew. One legend says that pieces of St. Andrew were taken to Scotland and presented to one of the kings there who carried them out in battle. And as if, as if that weren't enough, he looked up into the sky before the battle and saw white clouds in the form of an X against the blue sky. And so under that sign, he conquered. He, he was successful. He, he won the battle. So you have the blue flag with the white cross on it even down to today and so St. Andrew is the patron saint of Scotland even though he never went there he may or may not have had pieces of himself go there that may or may not have been by divine intervention depending upon which story you believe um, and it only gets weirder from there at one point the Byzantine emperor sent the skull of St. Andrew to the Roman emperor because what else do you get for the man who has everything I guess <laughs> And it was only in the late 20th century that all of these various relics came to be collected and sent back and more or less reunited in a church in Greece. And all this is, is interesting legend and, and as exhausting as it sounds like what becomes of our mortal remains after we're dead. But for us here today, sitting here, I wonder what it says to us about how much we can really understand about where it is that God is going to take us. I wonder what Andrew the fisherman thought his life was going to be like, much less his afterlife, when it was that Jesus came by and invited him to join his group. I doubt that he imagined that any of these things were going to happen to him. Probably he figured, well, I'll go along for a little while and I'll see what it's like and Maybe it'll give me some new ideas or a new thing to do. I don't think he thought it was going to take up the rest of his life and that it would in some way create a legend for him that would last for 2,000 years. I doubt that that's what any of us thinks either, and th there's probably no reason why we should imagine that our life will be just like his. But I do think it's worth remembering that sometimes when we are caught up into what it is that God desires for the world, what it is that God desires for each one of our lives, it will take us in directions we never really expected to places we never really expected to go. And perhaps even will enable God to do something through us that was beyond our imagining and beyond our capacity. I doubt that the fisherman Andrew ever imagined traveling thousands of miles and speaking to people who spoke other languages and all those other things. In some way, dear friends, that is what God calls each one of us to expect. That the mission of God, the vision of God for the universe is beyond anything that we can imagine, anything that we can envision, anything that we can plan, anything that we can do right this minute. It's only by that saying yes at that moment when Jesus comes by and says, well, why don't you follow me, that all the rest of it becomes possible. So, dear friends, be careful what you wish for. Be careful what you pray for. 
be careful what you say yes to. God has bigger plans for you and for me, for all of humanity and for all of the universe than any of us can imagine. So our thanks today to St. Andrew for pointing that out to us one more time. Now let's get back on the road and see where it is that God will take us. Amen.